So today I'm going to take you through the process to take water samples for uh, environmental DNA analysis. Now first and foremost is making sure that you're safe, so um, checking your environment, making sure that there's no, no hazards that are going to pose a risk to you. Um, the second important thing to remember when you're taking these water samples is uh, a risk of contamination between sites. So we don't want to be transferring any water, organic material or dirt between sites because that can contaminate uh, samples and give us false results. So um, there's a number of things we can do to reduce that contamination. Uh, first and foremost is staying out of the water uh, as much as possible um, and making sure that we're using clean and sterile equipment between sites. So we're at our first site here um, and I'll take you through the procedures to uh, the proper protocols to, to take water samples for eDNA. So, first and foremost, grab a pair of gloves. And what we use, we use these micropore filters to filter the water. Now, any sort of organic material and DNA is going to get caught in those filters and then it can get analysed back in the lab. Um, most importantly, we've got to make sure we get them labelled properly. So each of these filters gets labelled both on the outside of the packaging and then on the filter itself with the site code and the date. So these packages are sterile. So as soon as you open it, they're not sterile anymore, but we'll try to keep it as clean as possible. When you handle the filter, try to avoid touching either ends because that's where contamination can get introduced to the filter. So again, I've written the, the site code here. The number two on the end indicates that this is the second sample that's taken at this site, and then today's date. We'll pop that back in its packaging just to keep it as clean as possible for now. And then finally, we grab a, a large large gauge syringe to, to, to actually take the water sample. Okay, let's head down to the creek. So I've got my labelled filter and syringe ready to go. Now importantly, wherever possible, you don't enter the water because that can uh, you know, potentially contaminate between sites. So stay out of the water. The only thing that should enter the water is the tip of the syringe. Um, the other thing to avoid is try to pick some, some reasonably clean water. You don't want to be sucking up a lot of sediment or algae, which is just going to clog up that filter and make it harder for analysis. And then, so just putting the tip of the water just a couple of centimetres under the, under the water level. The other thing that's important is that we need to record the volume of water that goes through the syringe. And what we're aiming for is between three and 500 millilitres. So I tend to make it easy for my simple maths and just use it in 50 mil increments. So adjust the water level in your syringe so it's at 50 mils. And then the syringe just screws onto the end of the filter. Make sure that's nice and tight and the filter's not going to go anywhere. And then you just slowly push that water through. Repeat that process until you've got between three and 500 millilitres. The more water that goes through the filter, you'll feel it starting to get harder and harder to, to push the water through. And that's because the filter is starting to accumulate all that uh, organic matter and, and sediment that's in the water. Alright, that's starting to get really difficult to push the water through the filter now. So we're at 400 millilitres, so that's plenty. So I'll stop that now. Now the final thing you need to do is just draw some air into the syringe. And you're trying to push that air through the filter to get rid of any excess water. You can give the filter a bit of a shake as well just to get out those last few droplets. Okay, there we're done. Now I'll put the filter back into its, into its covering to keep it as clean as possible. And then 
finally get a clean snap lock bag. Place the whole thing in and then seal it up. Now it's probably a good idea to label the outside of the bag as well. And then importantly, you need to put in the volume of water that you've put through this filter. So I would write 400 mils on that, on that bag. So there we go. Now that goes on, uh, that's got to kept, be kept cold uh, as much as possible and then sent off to the lab um, within sort of a, a day or two to get analysed. So here again, we've got the, the site code here, which will be supplied two to indicate it's sample number two, today's date and the volume of water that was used. So this information is really important.